Welcome to a lesson on slope fields. In this video, we'll graph a slope field for a differential equation and also interpret a slope field for a differential equation. The geometric solution to a differential equation is the graph of a function that satisfies the differential equation. So if we have a differential equation and one of these two forms here, then at a point on the coordinate plane, dy dt or dy dx will give us the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the solution to the differential equation. So by plotting short segments, we can create what's called a slope field or direction field to represent the family of solutions to the differential equation. Now slope fields consist of just the small segments, but for direction fields, the segments have arrows in the direction of increasing t or x. So let's take a look at a slope field. Here we have the slope field for dy dx equals 2x. You may recognize the solution to this differential equation as the function y equals x squared plus some constant. Remember the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero, and the derivative of x squared would be 2x, which would satisfy this differential equation. So this slope field represents the family of functions y equals x squared plus one, where again each segment would represent the slope of the tangent line to the function at that given value of x. To show some of the possible solutions here, we could plot several solutions to the differential equation, again in the form of y equals x squared plus c. When we do this, you can see that these segments would represent the slope of the tangent lines at the given values of x to each of these functions. Now let's make our own slope field from the very beginning. To make a slope field for dy dx equals x minus y, we'll make a table of values and notice for this differential equation, to find the slope of the tangent lines, we need both an x and y coordinate. So for a small sample, we'll select these nine points to determine dy dx, and then sketch a small segment to represent the slope of the tangent line. Again, dy dx is equal to x minus y, so at the point zero, zero of the origin, dy dx is gonna be equal to zero minus zero, or zero. So at the origin, we make a small segment with a slope of zero, which would look something like this. At the point one zero, this point here, dy dx is one minus zero, which is one. So we make a small segment here with a slope of one that would look something like this. At the point negative one zero, dy dx is negative one minus zero, or negative one. So at this point here, we have a segment with a slope of negative one, maybe something like this. At the point zero one, we would have zero minus one, which is negative one. So at the point zero, one, or this point here, we'll make a small segment with slope negative one, something like this. At the point one, one, since one minus one is equal to zero, dy dx is zero at this point here. So we make a horizontal line or horizontal segment here, and so on. So negative one minus one is negative two. So at negative one, one, or this point here, We'll make a segment with a slope negative two, maybe something like this. At the point zero, negative one, we'd have zero minus negative one, which becomes zero plus one, so positive one. The point zero, negative one is here, a small segment with a slope one. At the point one, negative one, we'd have one minus negative one for dy dx, which is positive two. So put the point one, negative one here. We make a segment with slope two, maybe something like this. And then for the last point, we'd have negative one minus negative one, which would be zero. So at this point here, we make a segment with slope zero. So here's a small sample of how we create a slope field. And you can see it's fairly time consuming, and that's why we often use technology to sketch slope fields. Now let's get a better picture of this slope field using technology. Again, on the previous screen, we just sketched this much of the slope field. But now with technology, we've expanded it to include from negative four to positive four, both along the x and y axis. Again, this represents the general solution to a function that would satisfy this differential equation where each segment represents the slope of the tangent line at that given point. 
and with technology we can increase the number of segments plotted on a given interval. So here's the same slope field, but now we're sketching more and more segments on the same intervals. And again, this represents the family of solutions to this differential equation. But if, for example, if we were given additional information, for example, if we were told that the solution contained the point negative one, one, or that y of negative one was equal to one, then this would be the only solution to this differential equation, and this function would be called the particular solution to this differential equation. For another example, if we were told that y of two equals negative one, or the function contains the point two, negative one, or this point here, then this would be the graph of the particular solution graphed over the slope field. At this point, let's take a look at the difference between a slope field and a direction field. Again, the only difference is that the small segments have arrows in the direction of the increasing value of t, or in this case, x. And again, if we knew the function contained this point here, then we could graph the particular solution by following the slope field, or in this case, the direction field. The particular solution would look like this. And you can see how it follows the direction of the direction field. Notice as I move this point, which we're given as being on the solution, it is going to change the graph of the solution. Again, if we're given an initial condition or a point on the solution, we can find the particular solution rather than just graphing the slope or direction field to represent the general solutions to the differential equation. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more slope field. Here we have dy dx equals one divided by x. Notice in this case, we can find the slope of the tangent line by just using the x coordinates rather than both the x and y coordinates. So if we use three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, dy dx is just gonna be the reciprocal or one divided by x. So at x equals three, dy dx is one third. At x equals two, it's one half. At x equals one, it's one divided by one or one. At zero, it's undefined because we have division by zero. At negative one, it's negative one. At negative two, it's negative one half. At negative three, it's negative one third. So if we take a look at x equals three, right here, all these segments have a slope of one third. At x equals two, all of these segments have a slope of one half. At one, these segments have a slope of positive one. At zero, it's undefined. And then at negative one, negative two, and negative three, we can see the slopes here are negative one, negative one half, and negative one third. This slope field represents the family of solutions to this differential equation. And again, with technology, we can increase the number of segments over this interval. Here we have twice as many segments over the same interval. And then lastly, if we're given an initial condition or a point on the function that satisfies this differential equation, for example, if we're given y of one equals two, we know the solution contains this point here, and therefore, by using the slope field, we can determine the particular solution to the differential equation or the specific function that satisfies the initial condition and satisfies the differential equation. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.